Hi everyone and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'm going to do a speed paint of the Troglodytes from Massive Darkness. The first step is to use a bright primer and I'm choosing Korax White from Games Workshop. Next I'm painting two different skin tones just for a little variety. Half are getting painted with Midland Flesh and the other half with Cardic Flesh, both from P3. All of my paints are going onto a wet palette for this, which is handy for painting large numbers of the same unit. If you're going to be using one color for long periods of time, you want a way to keep it from drying out. It's also handy for making quick touch-ups later. Next I'm doing the eyes. Might as well get it over with. Eyes can be a pain, but these guys actually have large, easy to reach eyes, and since I still have the skin tone on my palette, I can fix mistakes right afterwards. Normally I'd use an off-white for the eyes, but since these guys are destined for the quick shade, I'm going with pure white. Now I'll zoom in so you can see how inaccurate this is to start off. I'm not going to fix it yet though, I'm first going to put in the irises and then touch it up. Next I'm using a bit of German Grey, though any dark color will do, and I'm putting in small dots for the irises. Now I'm going back to the original skin tone and pushing my brush towards the eye to shrink it back to a normal size. And then I'm just repeating this with all the other miniatures. It's funny how iris placement can totally change an expression. This dude on the far right looks totally confused because I spaced his too far apart. I was going to change it but it made me laugh so I left it. Next up are the beards. I picked out four different colors to use. If you're painting your entire set at once, this should be plenty to give you some random variation. Just pick a few of your favorite hair colors. Since this is going to be quick shaded however, you do not want to go with a pure black or a really dark brown or you won't be able to see any definition in the hair. In the character art, these guys don't have any eyebrows. I'm not a fan of the shaved eyebrow look, so I'm going to go ahead and paint some on. I temporarily left the eyebrows off the guy on the left so you could see what it looks like. I think they look way cooler with them. Next I'm painting the clothing. I picked out a few different colors to use, again for some variety, and now I'm going to mix and match them on the miniatures. You do want to try to avoid using colors that are very close to each other. The quick shade is going to darken each color to a point where subtle variation between them will be lost. All the guys with axes also have a number of belt pouches. I'm using the same colors for these as well. With all the fabric done, I'm now moving on to the armor. For the studded leather, I'll be using Mornfang Brown. I'm going to go with darker colors for the leather work because there's already a lot of faded colors on these miniatures. I'm also using the Mornfang to paint the straps on the bracers.
Next, I'm going to paint the fur cloaks that the troglodytes are wearing. I decided to go with two different fur colors for each guy. This will give me a chance to make even more variety since you can change the length or shape of the different fur colors on the cloak. For instance, with this first guy, I'm going to make a fairly high collar of Ulthu and Grey around the neck and shoulders. Then I'm going to do the rest with Storm Vermin fur. For the axe wielders, I'm also going to use these colors to paint the fur padding and the bracers. For the sword wielders, I'm painting the top half of the fur with the lightest color and the bottom half with the darker color. On the other two miniatures, I'm going to be using Carrick Stone as my light color and Steel Legion Drab as the dark. Here are the fur colors done, and as you can see, I changed the pattern on the back a bit. For some of the others, I might use the light fur as a trim around the edges and the bottom as well. Next, I'm going to be painting the shields and the handles of the swords and axes with XV88. There isn't a lot of exposed handle on the axe, since most of it is covered up with a leather grip, but there is some wood poking out at both ends, and also a small amount around the bottom of the axe head. I'm also using this color on the scabbards of the daggers that are hanging from their belts. Next I'm going to paint the leather straps using German Grey, and I'm being super careful at this point. I was being fast and sloppy in the beginning, but now it's all the fine details that are left. I'm using the German Grey on the leather straps around the axe handles and one of the dagger scabbards as well. Okay, this band of warriors is shaping up nicely, except maybe that one confused looking guy on the end. Next I'm going to do the weapon blades and the shields. I want a dark, oily looking metal, so I'm mixing half plate mail steel and half dead black for this. So with this color I'm painting the entire face of the shield except for the raised part in the center and the rim. And with the axes I'm only using this on the outer blade. I can't tell if these shield handles are metal or leather. Metal makes more sense so I'm painting them with the blackened plate mail as well. Next I'm mixing up equal amounts of Shining Silver and Glorious Gold. I use this mix a lot, it makes a very nice polished brass color. I'm using this for the center of the shields and for the remaining parts of the swords and axes.
I'm also using this for the pummel and crossguard of the daggers. Now I'm going back to Army Painter's Plate Mail Metal, this time with no black added. I'm going to be using this for all the studs on the studded leather armor and for any remaining bits of unpainted armor. This was the longest step in the whole process, just due to the number of tiny studs you need to paint, but it does look really cool in the end. The axe wielders have two arm guards, one spiky and one flat, though the flat one is easy to miss. The guys with the axes also have nipple piercings. The sculptors for Green Horde and Massive Darkness really seem to love piercings. Now I'm using pure shining silver. I'm using this first on the large buckle on the axe wielder's chest. Next I'm using the silver for the rim around the shield. And finally I'm doing a simple edge highlight on the blades of the weapons to give the impression of a sharpened edge. If the edge isn't straight, I'll go back to the 50-50 mix of plate mail and black and touch it up. So that concludes all the base colors. I went back and touched up any tiny mistakes since a really good first layer is all these guys are getting. Next I'm going to add a bit of texture to the base using some sterling mud just in random places. I gave that about 30 minutes to dry and then painted the entire base with dryad bark. Next I follow that up with a dry brush of Steel Legion Drab. Then I gave the base a final dry brush with Xandry Dust. And last of all I went back to the German Grey and painted the rim of the base. I gave that a good amount of time to dry before starting with the shade. Here's how our trogs are looking before the quick shade. I've done a few videos on quick shade already, so I'll go through the steps fairly quickly. The first thing I do is dip the miniature in about halfway. Let some of the excess drip off and then put the lid lightly back on the quick shade. Then using a brush I don't care about, I spread the quick shade around so the entire miniature and the rim of the base is coated. The next step is removal of excess shade. I start at the top and make sure the eyes and mouth are mostly clear of the shade. Then I work my way down, just dabbing off areas where there's too much shade and wipe it onto a paper towel. The trick here is to not remove too much or too little. You want every groove to have shade in it, but you don't want any details hidden or covered up. You're also on the clock. With a new can of quick shade, you get about 6 minutes before it gets sticky and unworkable. With an old can like this one, you might get 4 minutes. I also try to keep the miniature upright. I want the shade to be constantly flowing downwards so I can mop it up at the bottom and I know where the shade is going to pool on the miniature. Once the quick shading is done, I'll give the miniatures at least 24 hours to cure and then spray them with a matte varnish. So here's how the miniatures look before the matte varnish and then after. So 
So that's it. If you're like me and have a hundred or so unpainted miniatures that you just want to get onto the game table, you may want to try this method. I normally only use this for hordes of lesser minions, and that's exactly what Quickshade was intended for. They won't win any beauty contests, but they're perfect for gaming. A special thank you to all my patrons who support the creation of these videos. There's a lot more coming from Massive Darkness and Green Horde, as well as upcoming games such as Nemesis and Zombicide Invaders, so feel free to subscribe if those games interest you. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching. Yeah.